My sister is a widow with three kids, 10, 12, and Adam 15. My brother-in-law passed away in a car accident three years ago with Adam and Adam became disabled. My sister used to stay at home and receive benefits, but recently started looking for a job. We as a family had no idea, we always tell her to come to us if she needed help, but she's been distant lately. Last week she visited my parents to make an announcement, everyone was there when she announced that she arranged for Adam to go live in a nursing home. This was a shock my heart sunk, I can't even imagine how Adam must have felt to suddenly find himself away from home and his family. His sisters were crying begging their mom to let Adam stay, and they'll take care of him. My dad lost it on her, he berated her for treating Adam as if he has no attachments to his home, siblings and grandparents, and weekly visits with family because of his disability. He started crying, saying she took all that away from us and made a selfish decision and ripped their grandson away from his family just for a job. Mom and brother disagreed saying what she did was inevitable and she's already given Adam enough and she had the right to do what she did since she has other kids to look after and her position as a single mom was hard enough. I had an argument with my sister she refused to let me speak saying it's her son and she decides. I called her cruel and heartless to her face for uprooting her child like that and taking him away from home and sisters when he's already dealing with so much. She lashed out saying I don't get to judge her when she's feeling stuck and overwhelmed having to care for Adam while trying to raise her other kids and work. I said she could have come to us for help, but she told me off saying she's already given Adam three years of care, time, and money and couldn't do it anymore. She added that she can't miss this job opportunity, and nursing home was better for Adam's needs, and the family can visit him anytime they want. But as a mother how can you say I gave enough and stop caring for your child all of a sudden? My husband said let's do something, get fund or something because no matter how my sister tries to convince us that Adam is healthier and happier there, she basically abandoned him and took him away from his family. My sister told me to back off since I have it easy with my perfect kids. My dad kicked her out after she accused me of being judgmental and turning the family against her. Info, this is very important. Adam's disability level is severe, he requires round-the-clock care. My family helped my sister in several ways like paying for equipment, besides the benefits she receives, we also help look after the kids by either visiting or having them over, and my daughter visits to help with chores, homework or other stuff. My sister's decision to work was out of the blue, money wasn't her biggest struggle as much as she complained about being tired. You're the idiot. You keep mentioning the child and how your sister should be doing more. What about your sister's health? Is she struggling physically from helping her some? Struggling mentally from, oh I don't know, navigating the health system, being widowed, raising children, trying to have any sort of self outside of being a caregiver, work, and maybe she wants to eat food and sleep occasionally too. And now she has to deal with her family's crappy attitude about the whole thing. It sounds like she was at a breaking point. You should be praising her for knowing her limits and doing what is best for all four of them by acting on those limits. So, did my 84-year-old neighbor abandon his wife with dementia when he put her into a nursing home? No, he didn't. He was unable to give her the proper care, and she is in an environment now where she can get care 24-7, and he can go see her all the time. Your sister has probably tried everything and she is not a superhuman. You all are ready to point the finger at her, but it's funny that you all haven't offered to do anything. You expected her to come ask for help instead of stepping up and asking her what she needed. You're the idiot. Taking care of his sisters and having dad go over to visit and offering financial help do not equate to involved in his care. You have said that Adam is severely disabled. Do you have any idea how exhausting it is to care for a severely disabled person full time? Do you honestly think that she doesn't care because she took her son to a place where he can actually receive the care he deserves? I can understand, to an extent, where the family would be distraught that your sister didn't reach out and talk to you guys about what she needed to do, but I feel that she didn't because she knew exactly what the reaction would be. And you delivered. My wife gave birth to our first child July of this year. She tried to breastfeed our son but couldn't handle the pain, she also suffered from postpartum depression, so I suggested we try formula. Our baby is growing healthy and happy, and my wife started to feel good again. She still feels down sometimes, but her medication has helped her a lot. My brother and his family visited us last week. They gave us gifts for the baby and asked how things are going for us. 
We were just chatting in the living room when our baby started crying. My wife hurried to the kitchen to prepare our son's bottle when sister-in-law followed her. She said something along the lines of are you sure you want to feed your baby cow's milk? My wife said yes and explained that she tried breastfeeding, but it was too painful for her. Sister-in-law then went on to say that when she had her firstborn, she never complained of pain and that her great love for her child helped her overcome everything. I told her everyone's experience is unique, but she continued to say we are depriving our child the best nutrients because we're feeding him cow's milk. This time my wife already went to the nursery to feed our baby. My sister-in-law said she can't believe how some moms are so selfish by choosing to bottle feed to not destroy their figure, my wife is slim even after giving birth. I told her that is not the reason we chose to bottle feed. She stopped making comments because her daughter started to get fussy. She pulled a snack from her diaper bag and what do you know, she handed her daughter Cheetos. I wanted to say something, but I stopped myself because I thought it's uncalled for. We continued talking for a few minutes when my wife joined us holding our son to help him burp. Sister-in-law went on to say, oh you poor thing. Did mommy give you cow's milk? I hope you don't end up malnourished. My wife didn't say anything, but I could see from her expression that she was hurt. I told my sister-in-law, can you stop being a hypocrite and give your daughter a healthier snack? My brother got pissed that I called his wife a hypocrite. We got into a verbal altercation which ended in me kicking them out. Our parents are now angry at both of us for acting like teenagers. They want us to apologize to each other, but I refused. I said only if sister-in-law apologized to my wife first. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your sister-in-law is straight stupid for multiple reasons because it isn't cow's milk, it is baby formula that is specifically made for babies. And not everyone can breastfeed. Fed is best. Your wife was attentive to your baby's needs, bonded with him while feeding him in a quiet room, and then burped him. Sounds like a loving mother regardless of bottle versus breast. I would have said something too. It's good to defend your wife, especially against someone who won't stop saying ignorant things. Not the idiot. As long as baby is fed there's no issue. None of my kids could latch, that had nothing to do with how much I love them. I felt like such a failure when I couldn't breastfeed my first, I started pumping instead. He woke up every two hours day and night because he had a milk allergy which we didn't get diagnosed until three months old. I ended up so stressed and tired and weak from insisting he couldn't have formula because breast is best. I was 100% a better parent when I had the time to rest and recover, once he was switched to a special formula. You can't walk around slagging off parenting choices repeatedly and then be shocked when someone retaliates. Not the idiot. Your sister-in-law was being cruel and judgmental. I would have been disappointed if you didn't stand up for your wife. Maybe calling her a hypocrite wasn't best, but truth hurts. Try not to stoop to her level next time. Breastfed babies still have to be burped. She was just looking for ways to make your wife feel bad. I don't think expecting her to apologize after being so deliberately mean is asking much, but her first is a bit childish. My husband Kevin, 31, and I, 27, welcomed our first baby a week ago. Kevin is the type of person that gets stressed out easily and react to events negatively. We've had conversations about his ability to handle being the delivery room. I said if he couldn't be there it was fine seeing how he reacts under pressure and can have mom there instead. He said he could 100% handle anything and promised to be supportive and positive. I went into labor alone, he met me at the hospital, and when he entered the deer room he looked so stressed out and overwhelmed already. He started moving around periodically completely ignoring me. He got more visibly stressed when my pain got intense. He took my hand when I started having contractions and kept clutching it almost stopping blood circulation. My entire arm went numb I felt strained, and although I was in intense pain I saw his face, it was so red, and there was a visible vein in his forehead that looked like it was about to blow up. It was not helpful at all, in fact, it was frustrating and affected my emotions negatively. But still, I was willing to deal with it, then suddenly he started crying, like literally, sobbing really loud. This sent me into full panic mood. I found myself screaming telling him to stop several times, and as a result he literally yelled back in my ear. The nurse got involved I told her to get him out of there. He tried to argue with me, but wasn't given a chance and was pressured to leave the room. I didn't see him afterwards, after our daughter was born. And while I was resting he didn't show up, 
His mom kept calling to see where he was. She stayed with me and I haven't seen him till the day I was discharged. We had a big fight at home. He kept lashing out when I said how bad it was for him to ghost me when I needed him. He said I shouldn't expect him to stick around after cruelly and selfishly kicked him out the room and robbed him an opportunity to see our daughter's first breathes. I explained he was causing me to panic with how he was crying, but he accused me of making up excuses and I was purely at fault for kicking him out and getting the staff to gang up on him, no matter how hard I try to spin it. He said as a dad he should have liberty to be in the room no matter how he behaves and whether I like it or not. I got tired of arguing I told him to stop and he said he will but will never forget what I've cost him that day, then walked out. I was so mad and took time to cool off then when I unpacked my bag, I found a small box that contained a necklace with our daughter's name. I felt awful knowing Kevin left it for me to wear at the hospital, but the argument happened and he spent the entire time in the car in the hospital's parking lot. Not the idiot at all. You are the one in labor. Your comfort and safety are paramount. If his behavior is causing you to panic, you bounce him because that's not good for the baby either. Look, my dad passed out in the delivery room. I was a mum baby candy striper for a number of years in high school. Some men just can't handle being in the room while their wife is in pain. There is no judgment on that, everyone is different. His behavior after the birth is what's concerning. You, rightfully, tossed him out of the moment, and then he takes off to the point where his own mother doesn't know where he is. Aw oh, hell no. That is not okay. You already told him your concerns that he wouldn't be able to handle it. You told him you needed support and comfort. He reassured you that he could do it. Not only did he not provide comfort and reassurance, but when he was asked to leave because he was making your labor, a serious medical procedure, unbearable, he ghosted you and his newborn daughter until you got home. Yes, it's shame he had to leave. If he had managed to keep his cool he wouldn't have had to. Also, he could have easily come in once the birth was done and held his daughter straight away. But he didn't. I have only been around for one birth, my son, and it is certainly stressful for a lot of people in the room, but goddamn Kevin needed to pull it together. Even when he couldn't pull it together, he should have known how to read a room and understand he isn't helpful there, and he should have tapped out. To let someone with a more soothing tone take his spot. The whole fight when you get home is way out of line too. I can't imagine having that reaction. It isn't like the first breaths mean anything it is the time after that matters. So we, me 25, wife 25, have a baby girl, 13 month, who had been drinking formula, not so much now since she's 13 month, and it's recommended by our doctor that we can start using other means to give her the nutrients she needs. This morning, my wife was prepping a bottle of baby formula, since we were going to visit her family in the next state over, I took a couple of PTO days, since I wanted to be there for our daughter's first time meeting wife's family about a 4 hour drive. I've always been curious as to what formula tasted like, don't know why, but I've always been a pretty curious dude. So, I picked up the bottle and did the thing you have to do to test the temp by putting some on my wrist, but instead of just wiping it off, I just licked it and instantly started gagging. That stuff is like really gross, if you hadn't tasted it before I honestly wouldn't even recommend it. My wife comes into the kitchen to see what all the commotion was and asked me what was up since I was retching really hard, seriously, it's gross. I told her that I tasted some formula and it was like next level's gross and then commented that it's wild that daughter just laps this stuff up. Well, my wife became pretty annoyed at me and asked why would I just drink some of my daughter's food, I told her it was just like a little taste and not like I downed a whole bottle, but she said it's weird and that my curiosity will end up killing me one day, won't deny that as I've been in some pretty vicarious situations due to this curiosity and called me an idiot for taking food from daughter's mouth, even though those few drops would have been wiped away anyways. Didn't say that as I didn't want to further argue, but did tell her exactly how I tasted the formula. We got to my in-law's place maybe an hour ago, after saying our hellos and letting the grandparents meet their new granddaughter, my wife tells told her mom what I did earlier in the AM, to which mother-in-law, bless her soul, said that it was normal to be curious and it's not weird that I tasted a little of the formula and then said it's not like your father who wanted to taste the source and I breastfed you, which made me burst out laughing and father-in-law just had a grin and wife was just standing there shaking. 
my wife still thinks I'm the idiot, and I'm currently outside with father-in-law as he grills typing this, but I wanted to know, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I was honestly laughing fairly hard reading this. I am a woman with one, soon to be two, kids of my own. Well I've never tried it, I also have been curious, but the smell alone puts me off so never have. And no you weren't taking food from her mouth, because like you said it would ha even wiped away anyways. It's not like you drank it straight from your daughter's bottle. But the way you described it was very funny. I thought you were going to say you had tried it from the bottle, so the whole thing had to be tossed as no longer sterile, but that wasn't the case here. It's odd your wife accused you of taking food from your daughter's mouth, since you only licked what would have been wasted anyway. Not the idiot at all. I actually find it strange if someone wouldn't taste something before feeding it to their baby. My 18th birthday was two days ago, and my dad and stepmom's joint gift to me was going to be paying for a nose job for me. They had already booked a consult for me with one of the top cosmetic surgeons in our state. The problem is they never even asked if I still wanted a nose job, and the last time I remember mentioning wanting one was years ago. For context, I have been self-conscious about my nose ever since I started getting bullied for it in elementary school. My stepmom always tried to reassure me that when I was older I could get cosmetic surgery. At the time that made me feel better and I was completely sure I wanted a nose job, but I've been on the fence about it for the last couple of years. I guess I've been hoping I could develop some self-esteem and try and start liking the way I look, especially now I'm out of high school, and then later I would decide if I still wanted one. I stopped talking about hating my nose because the response was always that I could just get surgery later, and that just made me feel more ugly in the moment. So when they announced that my 18th birthday gift was going to be a nose job, I was really uncomfortable and kind of annoyed because I felt they should have asked me instead of assuming I still felt the same way as I did when I was a middle schooler. I thanked them and said I appreciated the thought, but I'm not even sure I still want a nose job anymore and I'd prefer if they could give me the cash so I can think about it some more before going ahead with it and if I decide I don't want a nose job I can put it toward something else like college or a car and apartment. They were pretty annoyed with me for not accepting the gift. They said it was rude to just ask for the cash. They also think that if I changed my mind in the last few years, I should have told them to avoid issues like this, but I honestly had no inkling they would give me a nose job as a gift, especially without asking first. I'm a little mad that they've decided I get no gift at all, just because I wouldn't accept the nose job, and they say I'm being ungrateful and rude. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Let's start with the fact that instead of teaching you to accept yourself for who you are and how you look, they always told you that you could change yourself. I find this aspect quite damaging for your self-esteem. The fact that they didn't ask for your opinion on this matter makes me think that your parents first don't really need your opinion on the matter, second they really think this is an issue to take care of. If they find cash offensive just ask for another gift. If they feel offended all the same maybe the gift it's not for you, but in some way it's for them. Not the idiot. It has been years since you last mentioned it and you were still a kid back then. Didn't they stop a second to think about whether you changed your mind as you got older? Besides, they are both idiots for telling a kid, if you don't like how you look, you can get surgeries as soon as you are older, rather than to teach you to love yourself and help you build some self-esteem. Well, you're not the idiot for refusing the nose job, and they are kin to the idiot for offering it as some sort of surprise. Obviously, you haven't been talking about wanting it for years, but in your stepmom's mind, she made a promise when you were in elementary school, and she was just fulfilling that promise. That said, a nose job is going to run $10,000 or more altogether, depending on where you live. This is a major gift. I'm going to assume that you didn't get a $10,000 gift last year. It makes sense for your parents to spend extra on the surgery to fulfill a promise more than they would normally. So, asking for the total they would have spent is pretty greedy.